we are on Mahasatipatthana section on uh, fetus. The section doesn't say very much about how to meditate on uh, fetus, except saying a meditator knows the eyes, visual objects, and fetus arising from those uh, objects. Uh, in, in in combination of these uh, uh, sense, sense, sensory objects. He, un he understands the eye, understands forms. Eyes are internal, forms are external. Now, we studied dhatu elements. There are 18 of them. Fetus arise when these 18 combine together, not all at once three of them at a time. Among many elements, these uh, 18 elements are in the... Earlier we studied uh, four elements and four derived elements. Four elements are very primitive elements, uh, earth, water, air, fire. Derived elements are uh, color, smell, taste, and nutriment. But here we have another set of 18 elements. There are eye elements, form elements, and eye consciousness element. They are called in Pali Chakku Dhatu, Rupa Dhatu, Chakku Vijnana Dhatu. Similarly, for ears, there are three. So the ear element, sound element, and ear consciousness element. Nose element, smell element, nose consciousness element. Tongue element, taste element, tongue consciousness element. body elements, touch elements, body consciousness element, mind elements, mental objects element, and mind consciousness element. Mano dhatu, mano vinyana, mano dhatu, dhamma dhatu, mano vinyana dhatu. Now let us take a few minutes to see these dhatus first. Chakku dhatu is the finest, shiny, clear faculty of the eye. That is, that which can see objects, not big whole eye, maybe pupil, inside, uh, what you call cornea, is the clearest part of the eye. That is the element of our eyes, that is the root basis of seeing objects. And that is made up of other eight elements. Eye element is made up of other eight elements. That is uh, earth, 
air, water, fire, color, smell, taste, and nutriment. Now each internal element is made up of eight external elements. I element is made up of those eight external elements. Eight external elements are always uh, eight. These eight elements are external elements, and through nutrients, the food that we consume. These external elements come into the internal, <laughs> so external becomes internal through consumption of food. That is why when eye vision is not very clear, we have to get some kind of uh, medicine, some chemical, some lotion, some ointment, or some kind of things to bring in to the body to make the eye element work properly. So we can see the interconnectedness between inner elements and outer elements. So the inner elements cannot work, op cannot work by themselves without the support of outer elements. So we can see the interdependent, uh, not interdependency, dependency of uh, internal elements on external elements. So and that is called form or rupa. Ahara uh, samudayo rupa samudaya. Ahara samudaya rupa samudayo. Ahara samudaya rupa samudayo. Buddha said that means ahara a long a long uh, long a h again long a r a ahara samudaya s a m u d a y a that is arising of food arises elements that means when we bring this food into the body then bodily elements begin to operate function if we do not bring external elements to the body body elements slowly eat up whatever is there in the storage in the in the stock <laughs> then it exhaust then it goes bankrupt <laughs> it cannot function any further so we have to keep supplying these things again and again and again to keep internal elements alive knowing this is called knowing the I, knowing this relationship very mindfully is called knowing the I. He understands the I, not only just knowing, understands, understands what I is and which part of his eye and how this eye operates. Chakku pajanati chakku here is this eye element, chakku dhatu. Then rupa dhatu, external objects that I can see are the element made up of elements. All external ele uh, objects are made up of elements. So when Buddha said external object means all the combination or unity of 
external elements in one place. They are, uh, they, they are uh, clustered together to make a form. So we can see uh, internal eyes and visual objects have something in common. That is, they both are made up of elements. As soon as these two come together, there, there arises eye consciousness. That doesn't mean we become conscious of our eye. That simply means consciousness arises through the eye. Friends, this consciousness is not sitting somewhere uh, doing things all the time. It arises dependent upon situation, the moment. If the situation, no situation arises, consciousness will not arise. That means it happens so quickly that we don't, that we think, ah, it was there already. <laughs> it, it happens so quickly. There is no time for us to notice its arise. People say, become mindful of arising of consciousness. You cannot become mindful of arising of consciousness. You can become mindful of uh, arising some objects with the consciousness. For instance, when greed arises, uh, you become aware of the arisen greed or arising greed along with that consciousness already there. So, the mindful meditator knows I, visual objects and consciousness. Tadubhayam patichya upajyati sanyojanam. Buddha mention only two things here. I, visual objects, depending on these two things arises Sangyojana. In fact, he didn't, want, he didn't go into all details because only these two things cannot uh, make uh, Sangyojana arise. There has to be a whole series of things for the Sangyojana to arise. What are the things that uh, precede the arising of Sangyojana? Uh, I want to define the word Sangyojana so that uh, one would understand what it means. The word I don't have to spell because it is given in the, this uh, trilinear translation in Satipatthana. When I use the word, you can just look at the word on page uh, 32, starting with page 31. Sang Yojana is a very good term uh, for this uh, particular mental state. Sang means connected. Yojana comes from the word yuj to uh, binding. <coughs> the word yoga comes from the same root yuj to bind. Uh, Sangyojanang visangyuttang in some other places Buddha says Sangyojanang visangyuttang. <coughs> Sangyutta is uh, united, joined, connected. Sangyojana is that which connects, that which connects. One situation is connected with another situation by this special factor. That is, this life is connected with 
another life. That is why it is called Sangyojana. Binding, the meaning is binding. Like we bind books, bind somebody to a something, you bind something with something. And that, the detailed meaning, otherwise it's, we simply translate it as fetters. Sangyojana always is used for this fetters that, uh, that, that we overcome or destroy when we attain full enlightenment. Uh, somebody yesterday asked me the difference between hindrances and Sangyojana. Hmm? Hindrances are temporary. They just hinder, obstruct your way. Sangyojana is sticking, binding, sticking. When it arises as a temporary thing, you don't call it Sangyojana. It calls hindrance. When it arises, you don't see much difference between, uh, say for instance, uh, desire. Uh, desire as a hindrance. Because you can, you can overcome that. And you move on. But the roots are there. S those that have roots in us and uh, already stuck to the skin, so to say, difficult to remove, are called fetters or sangyojanas. Hmm? Kilesa. Kilesa fall into the Kilesa issues for all kind of uh, defilements. They can be uh, both hindrances and fetters, anusayas, uh, upakilesas. Many names are used uh, to put all of them together. So when we define, categorize, we uh, put them into these categories. But we can put all the mental defilements as kilesa. Kilesa means that which defiles. That is why we, when we were talking about uh, uh, five stages of uh, uh, sensual pleasure, remember I mentioned five stages. First is asada, then Adinava, Okara, Sankilesa, and Nekhameja and Sanse. So, uh, Sankilesa is called Kilesa. Sankilesa means defiled, pollutes quite uh, effectively, quite successfully, and you will really be in very uh, rotten situation, so to say, <laughs> when defilements, you know, rotten, uh, defile the mind, it's very bad. So, the word kilesa is used for that. Sankilesa is used uh, when it is very active. Uh, kilisati, sankilisati. Kilitang, sankilitang. Kilitta means impure, impure, uh, impure. Sankilitang means very, very highly, you know, of a high degree of defilements. One, it go, we, one goes one step, you know, higher of defile, de defiling the mind. Uh, yojana, uh, if you use the word yojana, it means something different. Uh, it always is used with sang. Uh, yojana is the measurement. Uh, you go eight, uh, I think eight miles is equivalent to yojana. <coughs> uh, 
but uh, sangyojana is uh, something totally different from measurement that is the mental state so uh, sangyojana arises in a very mild way and uh, then they settle in the mind so anyway let us go back to our explanation uh, a meditator knows the eyes visual objects then the series of things happen between before sangdo in the arises what are the series things eye consciousness eye contact then perception vijnana <coughs> sanya and then appreciating the object then uh, feeling and then thought arises chakku rupa chakku vijnana chakku sampasa chakku sampasa ja vedana and then rupa tanha rupa tanha rupa sanchetana rupa vitaka rupa vichara and then sangyojana ten stages pass before sangyojana arises ten steps ten steps are let me repeat once again i one step visual objects second step i consciousness third step then i contact fourth step then feeling arising from the contact fifth stage and then recognition recognition of the form recognition rupa sanya as soon as the you as soon as you feel you recognize it then arises sanchetana thought then arises tanha craving and that the arises thinking about it uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, longer that is called vitaka then arises vichara deliberation now you have 10 when you begin to deliberate then sangyojana arises so we pass through these stages before it becomes a fetter then it is rooted in our mind because we have deliberated we thought that is where uh, thinking and deliberation uh, or vitaka vichara we start rupa sanchetana rupa tanna rupa vitaka rupa vichara these are the stages where you take uh, details into account uh, nimittagahi anubhyanjanagahi nimittagahi means you take you notice the signs signs of the object anubhyanjana means you go into minor details first overall superficial sign of the object its color shape uh, you know appearance and so forth then since you are deliberating of course you del- you deliberate in great detail going into various memories previous experiences connecting when we see an object uh, our mind uh, uh, recalls some of the p- previous experiences or sometimes we even pre- procrastinate sometimes we even plan uh, sometimes we 
uh, we will uh, fear some sort of uh, other mental activities take place when we deliberate then we have laid down the foundation for fetter so uh, that is through the eye similarly with the ears we know the ear and then uh, let me go through this uh, next section then mindful meditator knows how an unerison fetter arises at the beginning there was no 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 um, fetter but later on it turns into a fetter at the beginning it can be a just mere simple desire simple hindrance just you you know it is uh, something uh, pleasant that's all then when you keep thinking uh, remembering experiences and so forth when you keep deliberating then unerison fetter arises and then you know this was not there this was not there before now it takes root now it is there then how to give up an erison fetter what we do now we are in the mindfulness training when unerison fetter arises we must learn a way to give up this unerison i mean this uh, erison fetter this is where we say we have to practice uh, mindful reflection mindful reflection now at this level just paying bare attention is not enough because we are dealing with something very strong uh, to deal with something very strong we have to do something very strong and that is the mindful reflection mindful reflection is the food for mindful reflection is the food to prevent unerison fetter from arising mindful reflection is the food for arison fetters to fade away mindful reflection is the food to maintain the mind without fetters <clears throat> you remember we mentioned uh, in the earlier discussion uh, stay with mindfulness all day long just like frying pan heated all day long and when a drop of water falls in it it quickly evaporates but fetter suppose the frying pan is hot all day long you put pour a gallon of water it don't evaporate that quickly it boils and make the pot cool when fetter arises mindfulness becomes weak and that is why we have to work very hard by using mindful reflection mindfulness is one thing mindful reflection is another mindfulness is uh, very much passive mindful reflection is 
very much active. When the feta arises, mere pure mindfulness is not enough. We got to do something with mindfulness. What do we do? We think. We think about those five stages. We think of asada, adinava, okara, sankilesa, nisarana. We practice these five stages with mindful reflection. We have to see this is enticing, okay, but it is dangerous. Adinava. Why dangerous? Because that is the thing that bind me to sansar. I must think about it. I should not maintain. You know, when we have hindrance, we say, well, this hinders my concentration. Quick, simple enough. But it does not bind you to sansar. But when feta arises, we got to think more deeply, this is dangerous. See the danger of feta. This is dangerous because it will bring me down to samsara. I will, I, I don't know when I will come out of it. And therefore, this is very dangerous. We got to think of the danger very, very seriously. Think of danger mindfully. Then, we have to think of the degradation of the fetter. Simple, ordinary hindrance is degradating, but not as much as the fetter. Fetter is, uh, you know, throwing you always down the drain, <coughs> all your wholesome things. Then, defiling. Defiling to the root, that is why it is called Sangyojana. We mentioned earlier, Sangyojana means uh, uh, it becomes Sangkilesa. The word Sang also is used. In Nivarana, Sang is not used. Sang means very well, you know, done well, not uh, half baked. <laughs> Mind is defiled. Totally, completely, to the root. Thank you. What is the for mindful reflection? Is for there, mindful reflection is Yoniswa Yoniswa Manasikara. So it's not Sampajana. Sampajana uh, is understanding, uh, knowing, but uh, it also. S uh, uh, passive state. It's if it is passive. Yoniso Manasikara is the most active state of mindfulness practice. There even the word kara, you know, kara is doing. Uh, in uh, kamakara, one who is working. And therefore, uh, the active part of this particular mental state of mindfulness is very important to remember. <coughs> then uh, Sankilesa, when we see these four stages, then we see the benefit, the profit of letting go of that defilement, Sankyojana. When it is gone, <coughs> uh, how to give up an arisen fetter? This is how to give up. Mindful meditator should know how to give up the fetter by using this mindful reflection method. Hindrances also can, you know, very easily uh, can get rid of by using this mindful reflection. Normally, when hindrances arise, <coughs> we use very simple method to get rid of them, because our aim is to gain concentration. After gaining concentration, we have more work to do to get rid of fetters. And that is the stage where we have to do mindful reflection, and mindful reflection works even 
more effectively at that level. Suppose uh, uh, greed. Greed is uh, as a hindrance. It is also which is important to remember when it when we mention greed as a hindrance, we say karma chanda. Hmm? When it when we call it uh, uh, feta, we call karma raga. You know karma chanda. Uh, desire uh, for cra craving, chanda, desire. Karma is sensual pleasure. Desire for sensual pleasure is called karma chanda. Karma raga, raga means binding, the gluing. Uh, therefore, for uh, feta, karma raga is used, not karma chanda. The word raga simply means gluing, that is the glue, uh, uh, binding. <coughs> if we recognize it as a pattern in our life, a recurring pattern, then it becomes mutinous. If it comes up in one sitting, then we treat it like a hindrance? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, if uh, the fetter is so uh, powerful, no matter how we try to get rid of it, it keeps staying there. It, it doesn't go away. You know, that is why, just imagine, whenever we talk about getting rid of uh, uh, sensual greed, getting rid of greed, how many people get angry? How many people get upset? How can I live without greed? I am attached to my family, my wife, my children, my property, my this and that. How can I get rid of that? That very negative reaction arises because of it is because it is a sanyojana. When you say uh, let go of your uh, desire for ice cream, you can let go of it. You don't fight for that. You say, yeah, I can live without ice cream. That is hindrance. You can live without that, then you will not fight to maintain it. And that sort of simple thing, the desire, of course, the desire for ice cream, uh, is the uh, outer part of greed. So, when you examine your own mind, <laughs> you, you see which is my hindrance, which is my fetter. Suppose you have grudge against somebody, anger. When you come to meditation, uh, you know, you say, it's okay, let, uh, I don't want to worry about him, I don't want to have this anger towards this person, it's okay, you relax, you meditate, you gain concentration, you can get by with that, that moment. But have you gotten rid of that anger? No. It is down, deep down in your subconscious mind. Then it is a fetter. So, taking care of it superficially, temporarily, uh, when you can, if you can take care of it temporarily, and you know, get by the by your practice at that time, that is a hindrance. If it remains in your mind, bugging your mind again and again and again all your life, that's a fetter. So. <coughs> In meditation, when you walk, when you talk, uh, sitting on the cushion, lying down, any time feta ke, either hindrance can arise or feta can arise. There is no any particular time for feta to arise. When it is arri when it arises uh, uh, and you get rid of it uh, 
within very short time, then you know this is a hindrance. But when, it's, when it stays in the mind for, until you die, you will not be able to get rid of it. That kind of uh, mental obsession, as you said, is uh, fatal. And that fetter can arise in meditation. That deeply rooted uh, uh, binding or fetter can arise in meditation. And there is no guarantee that it does not arise. So to say that it doesn't arise, we are not dealing with that in this section and so forth, is not correct. There is no guarantee that it does not arise when we sit to meditate. That very deeply rooted hatred can arise during meditation. So some people cannot meditate when it arises. When hindrance arises, it is not that difficult. You can get rid of it. So that to see the difference between theta and hindrance, you got to watch how strong it is. We all remember the ten fetters. Uh, I will show the chart later on. I simply wanted to give you a sort of overall uh, picture now, and then we go to specific in the last talk. Uh, I like to have a short break now, for ten minutes break, and then come back uh, 